Good afternoon from the cloudy Copenhagen. Welcome to the webinar on how to gain global recognition for energy management hosted by Copenhagen Center on Energy Efficiency. My name is Aris. I'm a program officer at the Copenhagen Center and I'm supporting the activities related to energy efficiency webinars. A couple of things before we move to the main content of our webinar. Uh, this webinar is going to be about 60 minutes long, including time for the question and answer session at the end. In case you cannot stay until the end or want to get back to our interesting presentations, all the materials and recordings of the whole webinar will be available online in a few days on the Copenhagen Center's Knowledge Management System. And we have many other webinars and information there. Have a look and I'll give you the link in a few minutes. A few things about the Copenhagen Center. The center conducts research and advisory activities in the field of energy efficiency and serves as energy efficiency hub for the Sustainable Energy for All initiative. The center has an established network of global, regional and national partners with a broad range of stakeholders to help accelerate the, the implementation of energy efficiency activities. On a regular basis, the Copenhagen Center is conducting webinars. All materials, including recordings and presentations from previous webinars, can be found on Copenhagen Center's Knowledge Management Center. Under the e-learning section, the material of today's webinar will be uploaded shortly. I would like to briefly introduce the speakers of today's webinar. Tracy is a program director in the Science and Technology Divisions at Energetics uh, Incorporated. Nancy Gonzalez is uh, an energy analyst uh, also in the Science and Technology Divisions at Ener uh, Energetics Incorporated. And Adriel is uh, an energy specialist at New Gold, Gold's New Afton Mine in British Columbia, Canada. His past experiences include engineering manager, electrical engineering, consulting engineering, and maintenance planning and controls manager. Finally, I would like to inform that you can send us your questions during the presentations, and we will do our best to answer as many as we can at the end. Please do not forget to mention the name of the panelist that the question is for. With that, I would like to, to give the floor to Tracy. Tracy, the floor is yours. Okay, great. Thank you, Aris. And thank you to the Copenhagen Center on Energy Efficiency for this opportunity to speak to you all about the Energy Management Leadership Awards. And thanks to everyone who's joined us today. Uh, we're very excited about these awards. This is the third year for this program, and we have lots of great success stories to share. Uh, stories that we've received over the first few years of the program and in the third year we hope to showcase many more organizations around the world. So I'll kick this off and I'll speak very briefly about the organizations behind this global awards program. So first I'd like to introduce you to the Clean Energy Ministerial, also referred to as the CEM. Uh, the CEM is the only annual ministerial level platform for promoting the advancement of clean energy and it's unique because it combines a high-level policy dialogue through an annual meeting of energy ministers with a set of action-oriented work streams across four different areas, uh, energy demand, energy supply, energy systems and in integration and cross-cutting support. And the CEM values energy management and the energy management working group helps to complete its work in this area. So the Energy Management Working Group, also called EMWG, is a group of 19 governments that are sharing best practices from their own experiences with their national approaches. And they're working together to accelerate the adoption and use of energy management systems in ISO 5001. And the country co-leads are Canada and the United States. And the EMWG operating agent is the United Nations Industrial Development Organization. And this awards program is one of the EMWG's marquee activities. And in addition, the EMWG organizes the energy management campaign. And that really seeks to drive action and secure commitments from governments, from partners and companies to promote ISO 5001. And its goal is to reach five or 50,001 certifications to ISO 5001 by 2020. And this group is doing a lot of other exciting work as well that I won't go into now, but please visit the website to learn more. And in addition to being part of the Clean Energy Ministerial, the Energy Management Working Group is also part of another international forum 
the International Partnership for Energy Efficiency Cooperation, uh, also called IPEAC. And IPEAC was founded by the Group of Eight, or G8, uh, to promote collaboration on energy efficiency. And IPEAC's members work together on policies that that increase the deployment of energy efficiency technologies and best practices. And IPEAC is also the lead organization carrying out the G20 Energy Efficiency Action Plan and its work stream. And the EMWG is a task group of IPEAC. ISO 50001 is a key part of the work in the CEM and IPEAC and a great opportunity for their government members that aim to achieve ambitious energy goals established in their countries. And it's an ISO 2001 is it can provide an international bench, benchmark for progress towards those national goals. And it often it offers even more value because it's a quantifiable standard that is relevant to all sectors. Any organization in any sector that uses energy can apply the standards principles in their operations to improve energy performance. Uh, so ISO 50001 provides the framework to set up the processes and the procedures that are needed to, to understand, to track, analyze, and to monitor energy and on an ongoing basis to help organizations have the information that they need to make decisions on, a, on how to maximize their energy use. And experts from over 50 countries created ISO 50001 and they continue to work together to improve the standard and to make sure it benefits the governments, the companies, and the other organizations that use it. And the EMWG views ISO 50001 as a proven framework to accelerate achievement of national and international energy and climate goals, and also for companies to use to achieve their goals. A tremendous number of companies from around the world have been leading in the implementation of ISO 50001. Uh, a recent survey from ISO shows that over 20,000 certificates uh, were reported for ISO 2001 in 2016, and that's up 69% since the year before. Uh, the Clean Energy Ministerial's Energy Management Working Group wants to recognize leading organizations that are using ISO 50001 to achieve uh, energy and sustainability goals. and because these leaders are they're demonstrating the business value and paving the path to help guide others and their efforts can really multiply and and accelerate the adoption of the standard and expand the resulting savings that are that are possible when uh, organizations are using a robust energy management system and to recognize those organizations the clean energy ministerial offers its energy management leadership awards so now I'll pass it over to Nancy who will provide more details on the awards program and how to participate. Great, thank you so much, Tracy. So as Tracy mentioned, um, the EMWG launched the 2018 Energy Management Leadership Awards recently in October, uh, and the Clean Energy Ministerial invites your organization to participate in this awards program. To enter, um, organizations are asked to submit a case study that describes your ISO 50001 implementation and your results and the business benefits. The case studies are reviewed by um, a judge, reviewed and judged by a selection committee of energy management system experts from around the world. And award recipients will be notified um, in April of next year and they'll be publicly announced in May. The EMWG manages these awards, Tracy mentioned that. And the submission deadline is um, the 24th of January. And we hope um, that by acquiring information from this webinar, you'll um, consider uh, applying and preparing entries soon. Um, from past years, this is our, our third year with the awards program. And for the past two years, we've heard many uh, benefits um, from organizations that have participated. Um, the number one benefit, of course, is the opportunity for recognition at a global scale um, uh, and program from a high level forum with support from energy ministers. This is the Clean Energy Ministerial that Tracy mentioned. Uh, another benefit is the demonstrated com commitment and leadership to your customers, investors, employees, or stakeholders within and uh, outside of your organization. Another benefit is affirmation of leadership by trusted third party 
on their behalf, including governments, press, and international organizations. And um, by participating in the awards program, each organization will receive um, an award for contributing insights through their quality case studies, and this would be a participation award um, for your efforts and your leadership. So eligibility, who can apply? Um, uh, any organization um, from the industrial, commercial, or public sector um, that has achieved an ISO 50001 certification at a facility level or across multiple facilities at a corporate level are eligible. Um, the certifications, certifications must be issued by an accredited um, third-party certification body. So there are three award categories in the Energy Management Leadership Awards program. The first award is the top honor. It's the SEM Award uh, of Excellence in Energy Management. And this award will recognize the achieved savings in the organization's efforts to transform the way they're using energy. The awards aim to acknowledge organizations of various sizes, types, and sectors from around the world. The top winners will be honored uh, next year during a formal ceremony at the 9th Clean Energy Ministerial Meeting in Copenhagen, Denmark. And this takes place from May 23rd to the 24th. This is an annual meeting of energy ministers and senior delegates from 24 clean energy ministerial member countries. One or more representatives from the organizations that receive the SEM Award of Excellence will be invited to attend the public portion of the meeting. The second award category is a National Energy Management Award. Governments participating in the Energy Management Working Group can offer a national award for entries from their countries. Currently, there are five governments offering national awards, including Argentina, Canada, South Africa, the United Arab Emirates, and the United States. The governments will determine how and when to honor their national awards locally. And the last category is the Insight Award. All qualifying entries will be recognized for helping to build global insights on the benefits of energy management systems. And most importantly, the efforts made by organizations to document and share their experiences within the case studies. All the qualifying and uh, case studies will be available online and all award participants will be featured in international promotions through the Clean Energy Ministerial and the Energy Management Working Group and its partners, including IPEAK and others. So you can visit the Energy Management Leadership Awards website. There's a link provided in the slide. Um, there you'll find a fact sheet that you can download and share within your organization or with organizations that have an ISO 50001 certification to let them know about the awards program. You'll also find the official rules um, with full awards program details on how to apply the submission deadline, the selection process, the evaluation criteria, which I'll go um, into in the next couple of slides and more. And there are also frequently asked questions that you can leverage and review to address any questions that you might have. You'll also find the, most importantly, the entry form <laughs> and the case study template that you'll need to use in preparing your award entry. To apply, organizations must submit an entry form along with a completed case study using a case study template that we provide online. Uh, participants are required to submit case studies in English, given that our uh, international panel of experts are from all over the world. Case studies should be kept between four to six pages in length. Longer case studies will not be accepted. And entries should include a copy of your current ISO 50001 certificate. So again, the deadline to apply is January 24th, but early submissions are encouraged to ensure the eligibility of your entry. Upon receipt, each entry will be reviewed, and if entries are incomplete, the Secretariat will notify submitters of any missing information, and the submitter may resolve the issue and resubmit any time up until the Janu January 24th deadline. So submitting early gives you a little bit of a um, benefit. So now you know how to apply, how will you be judged? The evaluation criteria is provided in the case study template. This is what the judges will be using to score your case study. Every case study is evaluated based on content criteria and the points are, points are associated with topics and two criteria. 
The first is content that describes your ISO 50001 implementation and your results as well as benefits you are seeing. And the second is focused on sharing of lessons learned and insights throughout the implementation process. There are 10 topics total and for a total of 100 points possible. And again, the evaluation criteria and the case study can be found online. So selection of the awards winners will entail a juried process with a panel of energy management system experts from diverse countries. Once case studies are submitted, the Secretariat will conduct an initial review of each entry to ensure the eligibility and completeness. Um, this means that it, it'll make sure that the case study addresses each of the evaluation criteria. The entries then will pass from the initial review. Those that are eligible will be accepted and move on to the selection phase. Each case study will be reviewed and scored by two experts. The experts will score the entries on a scale from 0 to 100 using the evaluation criteria mentioned. The EMWG Secretariat will compile the scoring sheets from the experts and tabulate the points for the case studies. All accepted case studies that meet the evaluation criteria will become qualified entries and thereby earn an insight award. And the highest scoring entries will move forward as finalists for the SEM Award of Excellence Award. The experts will meet to review and discuss the scores of the finalists and determine the top Award of Excellence winners. The EMWG will then nominate the highest scoring entries from each participating country to receive a national award. And those national governments will determine um, how to distribute those awards. To date, we have organizations with facilities across 29 countries that have submitted more than 70 case studies. This is quite a milestone on our side and we are very much excited. This represents almost 200 ISO 50001 certified facilities in the public and private sectors. And now we invite you to visit the awards website to view the award-winning case studies. It's to complete the program entries for, 2000, for the 2018 awards competition. We are very excited to have launched um, the program this year, and we hope you'll consider applying. Now I'll turn it over to Andrea Cooper with New Gold, a past winner of the top honor, the Award of Excellence, to share some of their experiences with the awards program. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah, if we look at this, at this little map I have on the screen here, we'll see that this is a map that Nancy sent me and this is where registrations for this webinar are based. And it's quite amazing to see this is a multinational webinar with registrations for this webinar from across the globe and interest from across the globe. It just shows the, the far-reaching impacts that ISO 50001 and Clean Energy Ministerial along with the Energy Management Working Group have had. Look, energy management at New Afton is self-sustaining. It is something that is done by all our employees and contractors on a day-to-day -day basis as part of what we do here at New World. And there's a high level of energy awareness at, at New Afton and everyone here continually works to improve energy performance in everything they do. A energy matters to, to us here at New Afton. Now, that sounds like, like a lot of words, but the underlying objective in this vision is that energy conservation is actually a decision. A decision by all employees to be efficient and conserve energy in everything they do on a day-to-day -day basis and then acting on that decision. And this vision and this objective was actually the driving force and the underlying reason behind our CEM uh, award back in 2016. But I'll touch on that a little bit more later. Well, after that introduction there, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you on this webinar. No matter where you may be around the world, everyone's in different time zones, so welcome. As Eris and Nancy mentioned, my name is Andrew Cooper. I'm the energy specialist at New Gold's New Afton Mine, right on the west coast of Canada and British Columbia and Kamloops, BC. Now, New Afton is one of uh, New Gold's operating gold mines. 
we produce about 85,000 ounces of gold per year and about 75 million pounds of copper. Now, that's not really big in the, in the mining world. We are a pretty small mine, but for us, it's significant, and we're an integral part of, of the new gold, uh, new gold group of companies. You can probably tell from my accent, I'm not originally from North America. I was actually born and raised in Bulawayo, the second largest city of Zimbabwe. It's that little red dot on the map there. And I see the map, there's a registration uh, on the webinar from South Africa as well. There's someone else from the Southern Hemisphere. But uh, yeah, so it's all, all great and, and it just shows what our international community energy management has actually become. In 2016, we were very fortunate to be selected as one of the award winners for the Energy Management Leadership Award. Other winners were Cummins, who produced diesel engines and generators. The lady on the left is from, from Cummins. The gentleman in the, in the middle is from LG Chemicals. Now, LG Chemicals is actually the second largest or the, the largest chemical company in North and South Korea and the 13th largest chemical company in the world. Cummins produced, Cummins employed about 55,000 employees. And on the right hand side is myself from little old New Afton Mine with 450 <laughs> employees. Now, the reason I show this and, and talk about this is that to make the point that you don't have to be an industry powerhouse to enter and win this competition. Anybody can enter, anybody can win, and I really encourage you to do it. In this presentation today, we're going to be talking about the, the why and the how. Why we submitted the application or the motivation behind it, and how we went about preparing this, this, the, the submission. Now, as Aris mentioned earlier, please, if you have any questions during the presentation, please into the chat bar and submit them, and then Aris will relay those questions to the various panelists at the end. First, why we entered. From a financial perspective, as a copper and gold mine, we sell into a common gold and property market. So all the copper and gold we produce goes into a market and it gets absorbed by the market. So we don't have any traditional competitors in, in the sense that a lot of other companies had when they're competing and um, for, for, for they've got competition for their, for their product. And we have no supply chain requirements from people. We don't supply to anyone except the common market. We don't have any supply chains to specify we have to have ISO 50001. So the, the publicity and the recognition we would have got from entering a submission was not for financial reasons at all. Well, what about share price? New Afton has a growth strategy. We very focus on growth and expansion through acquisition and growth through acquisition. So our shareholders in our company invest primarily for growth. Like some other companies, we have very little shareholder investment for sustainability reasons. I know a lot of companies, they measure the shareholders, analyze their shareholders, and a lot of companies, people invest in for sustainability reasons. But because we're a growth company, we don't have that. So it was not for share price. On the sustainability side, Newgold's committed to social responsibility and sustainable mining. So this application would would definitely help uh, demonstrate that commitment. So sustainability did have something to do for it, something to do with it. Now, what about something that you may not think about, but what about an opportunity to create energy awareness? I always say that it's people and not systems who manage energy. And the best systems will fail without the people to manage them. Now, as per our vision, we focus on developing an employee conservation mindset. And that's one of the main reasons we implemented ISO 50001 in the first place. We jump at any opportunity for 
positive reinforcement of this effort. Applying for a prestigious award like the CEM uh, Energy Excellence Awards was an ideal opportunity to create some awareness and get some positive reinforcement. So this, the opportunity to create awareness was the primary reason for our submission in 2016. The idea was very basically brought through, brought forward by the energy specialist. It was supported by the management team with the primary purpose of promoting energy awareness. So with the why behind us, we now look at the how do we prepare and how do we submit. So when it comes to who should prepare the application, the person preparing the application should really be intimately involved with the ISO 50001 process at the place where you are working. That's ideal. And the reason I say that is that nobody can tell your story like you can. So this is not a technical paper, it is a story and it's up to you to tell your story in the best way possible. Next, you, next is really ideally to begin with the end in mind. The slides that Nancy was talking about a little bit earlier are fantastic in the evaluation criteria. You can see there, there are evaluation criteria which tell you exactly what are looking for. So if you are watching this webinar, you have a huge advantage over those who are not because you know where to find those slides. You know where to get those evaluation criteria. The judges will be looking for information required in those criteria. So give the judges exactly what they want. That's the way to do it. Don't give them nothing more, nothing less. Give them what they want. And that will really help your application. In terms of duration, in 2016, the awards were a little bit later in the year. So the award application actually took me one month to prepare. Now, one month sounds daunting, but don't let it be daunting. It wasn't eight hours a day, every day uh, for a month. So I did have uh, other commitments. Now I spent maybe an hour a day on average with that submission. As with anything in life, it's worth doing well if you want a good outcome. So take the time to prepare. You want to submit the best submission possible. So take the time you need to prepare and submit the best submission that you can. Now, <laughs> you're probably wondering, what on earth is a dump truck doing in the presentation? But this is a little story that I learned when I submitted my application. And I really encourage you to do this as well. Is I went and everything on a piece of paper and I hadn't I confess, I hang my head in shame. I hadn't read the rules correctly. I ended up submitting initially 16 pages and as Nancy mentioned they wanted six so I had to go back so we done I had to go back and refine that but refining that was actually a blessing in disguise as in life when you make mistakes you learn most from your mistakes and refining what I put down forcing me to pick out what was actually important in the process really helped find you my application and let me convey what the key elements were. So dump everything down, then refine what you have dumped. It will force you to analyze everything and say, is this important? Is this important? And the, the six page limit is actually a, a great limit because it forces you to focus on, on the essentials. Now this is about appealing to what I spoke about to begin with the end in mind. People will be reading and judging your application. So make it appealing to look. Sounds like a first grade teacher telling their children to be neat and write neatly, but this is a key element in your presentation. Aesthetics and first impressions make a big difference. So make it appealing to look at, simple to read. When I, when I talk about make it simple to read, 
use simple words, don't use highfalutin words will, will cause the judges to reach for a dictionary when they're trying to understand what you've said. So use simple, easy to, easy to read words and easy to use and easy to read graphics. Don't throw graphics in there which are, are complex, have small numbers, small text, and people need an eye examination to read them. Make it again. Make it simple for the judges to understand your message. Be consistent. And that's consistency with things like font, in your alignment, in your bullets, consistency in your quotes, consistency with labeling graphics. Be consistent. It adds to the appeal of the document. Use pictures where possible. A picture is worth a thousand words. I know that's a terribly well-used cliche, but it's true. Sometimes you can say in a picture what you can't say in text. So use pictures where possible to help convey your message. In the case study template, you will see that they ask for quotations. So they've asked for quotations, supply quotations. You may think, well, how am I going to get quotations? Well, I promise you, important people love to be quoted. So you're not going to have a problem getting quotations. They've asked for them, use them. If you have any hyperlinks in your document, make sure those hyperlinks are active. There's nothing worse than reading a submission or judging a submission and have a hyperlink, then you've got to go and copy that hyperlink, paste it into Explorer. So if you transfer the document, you can convert it to, to PDF and you can make your hyperlinks active. So just make sure that it's to save the judges time. So again, think about what the judges want and make it easy for them. And then check, check, and check. Spell check, grammar check, punctuation check, Check the names are right, check everything is good and correct. Talking about checking, the next thing you need to check about is your data. You are going to have to submit data. Why? Prove that your ISO 50001 system is giving you some results. So if you're submitting an application, I assume that you will have an ISO 50001 system in place. So pulling up the data required should not be too much of a challenge for anyone submitting it, especially if you have a good ISO 50001 system in place. The ISO 50001 information you can pull from your energy objectives and targets, your energy review, so you should have a lot of information available at your fingertips to save you time for the data submission. The data has to be accurate and verifiable. The reason for that is there's no promotion of, of bogus results or promotion of something that you haven't done. So be accurate, be honest, and be very and make sure your results are verifiable and can be proved. Project records are a good place. You have any records of projects that you've kept, anything you've done to help improve efficiency, the cost associated with the, the cost associated with those projects. The timelines for the projects are going to be important when you're doing discounted cash flow analysis and rates of return. Utility incentives, those factor into your rates of return because they improve your, improve your paybacks and your rates of return. So keep records of all those and include that information in your submission. We were very fortunate to have a data historian available, so we were able to pull up data we needed very quickly and easy. But we had backup systems and we could pull information even without that data historian. So, so if you haven't got a data historian, don't let that hold you back. You have the information you need for accurate submission of data. Looking back to 2016, what would you have done differently? So thinking about the fact that maybe I would have read the rules more closely and not submitted 16 pages, but that was actually a blessing in disguise. So, in hindsight, I don't believe I would have done anything differently with my submission. <laughs> and, and when we heard about this, the award, um, and the fact that we had won the award, what did we do? Well, we had a major celebration, major party, major achievement uh, award here, and a company-wide bulletin went out saying, we had won the award. We have a daily report that goes to every employee in the company. 
There was notification of the award in there. We received congratulatory letters from the executive management team. And we incorporated details around the award in our sustainability report. Again, we wanted to create awareness around this. So when we won it again, it was a fantastic opportunity for, for us to promote this to the employees. Say, look, this is what your efforts have helped us to achieve. Thank you for your input in making ISO 50001 such a successful reality at New Afton. So we really made the most of this opportunity to create awareness at the organization. You've heard a why and a how. We're going to look a bit now at why it's important to participate in these awards. First of all, awareness. Awareness, I believe, is one of the keys to the global warming challenge we are currently, uh, currently facing. Awareness changes perceptions. And once we change perceptions, things start to change. And this is where ISO 50001 plays a, a key role as one of the primary benefits of ISO 50001 is not so much the energy savings and the reduced uh, GHG emissions. They're worthwhile secondary benefits, but they are short-term, initially short-term benefits. Creating energy awareness among employees and building energy management into the culture and systems of the company is the primary, in my opinion, the primary benefit of ISO 50001. So those energy savings and GHG reductions are actually a hook, hook to get companies implement ISO 50001. Then by participating and sharing, they create awareness of the financial benefits of ISO 50001. So companies see the financial benefits of ISO 50001. They see the environmental impacts and environmental improvements as a result of the GHG emissions. And that gets them involved. They participate and implement ISO 50001. This in turn leads to building energy management into the systems and the culture of the company and starts to create energy awareness among employees. And this in turn creates long-term sustainable energy savings and GHG reduction. So by creating the awareness, by making people aware of the benefits of ISO 50001, you are encouraging people to implement ISO 50001 and that has a long-term, long-reaching benefit. The case studies you submit, the awards that get published are a fantastic tool to let the world see the benefits of ISO 50001 and the energy we, energy we save and the emissions we reduce as a result of it. It also demonstrates uh, your commitment to your social responsibility practices at a company. And like I said, Newgold, if you're committed to social responsibility, this is very much in line with that in demonstration of, of that award. The, as Nancy mentioned earlier, there's a lot of publicity around people who submit and people who win. So really, if you're really looking to promote your policies, submit an application. And if you win, apart from the very positive public relations that uh, you will get as a result, it really will be very cool to go to Copenhagen, Copenhagen Denmark in, in June of 2018. There's an old saying that when the tide comes in, all the ships rise together. Now it's up to all of us to take action, show support. It's up to all of us to do our bit to save energy, to reduce greenhouse gases, create awareness around the tangible and intangible benefits of energy conservation. So sharing ISO 50,001 experiences, we all learn from each other. So I really encourage all of you to take the time, submit an application. Others will learn from you. You will, I promise you will learn something in the process. And who knows, you might just win. Thank you and uh, thank you Aris for, for putting this on.
Thank you, Andrew, for your very interesting presentation. Now it's time for our uh, question and answer session. Uh, we received a few questions from the panelists. And uh, the first question is for Tracy. The question is, what is the participation model of Clean Energy Ministerial, ministerial? only countries can, part can participate? Um, so uh, the Clean Energy Ministerial um, has a, a wide range of country members and so primarily it is participating governments. Uh, there is some collaboration with other stakeholders though. Uh, I encourage folks to visit the Clean Energy Ministerial website to learn more about it. Uh, the annual meeting is primarily uh, focused with the Clean Energy Ministerial um, Energy Ministers and other high-level delegates. In past years there have uh, been public portions of the meetings, uh, so there's there are a lot of different ways for different organizations to participate. And with the Clean Energy Ministerial, there are a wide range of initiatives. And so, for example, the Energy Management Working Group is one of the initiatives. And uh, and you know, even through this awards program, uh, uh, both the public and private sector are participating. Uh, we um, have a variety of different activities that involve uh, you know standards organizations, accreditation organizations. So uh, even within each of the initiatives within the Clean Energy Ministerial there are many ways for different types of organizations to participate. Thank you, Tracy. The next question is uh, for, for you, Tracy, or, or Nancy. Uh, evaluation criteria can be used for other similar uh, competitions on energy management system evaluation in European project, uh, projects focused on energy management system. Can we cooperate in sharing your evaluation methodology? Hi, this is Tracy. Uh, yes, that would be fantastic. We'd be very happy to talk to you about uh, collaborating on that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next question is uh, for you, Andrew, and the question is, uh, what were the challenges when you, when you were preparing the submission? The major challenge faced was identifying the best information to submit for the, the judging criteria. I'm sure most of you know that once you've implemented a system, there are so many aspects of the system and so many things you can talk about. And the, the biggest challenge for us really was identifying what were the key elements that we needed to put down. What would make the most impact? What would convey our success? And what information would be the best to represent our company in the best possible light. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Uh, uh, the next question is for Nancy. And the question is, can cities participate to the Energy Management Leadership Awards? Thank you, Aris. If I understood correctly, did you, did you was the question, can cities participate? Yeah, I suppose yeah, municipalities and uh, local governments. Absolutely, that's a great question. Um, yes, municipalities and cities can participate. Um, the awards program is open to the industrial, commercial, and public sectors. Um, we've had uh, a few m municipalities that have participated in the past, and if you are interested in looking at past case studies from similar sectors, you can go online and visit our website. There's a library of case studies that you can um, read through for, for ideas. Um, do pay close attention to the official rules for the 2018 program because some things might have changed from year to year. So as you leverage the existing case studies online, um, do keep in mind the 2018 official rules. Thank you very much, Nancy. And uh, I think we have another question for you. And the question is, can companies from countries that are not uh, part of the Clean Energy Ministerial members participate in the Energy Management Leadership Award? Yes, absolutely. The, um, the awards are open to um, all organizations that have um, achieved or have become certified to the ISO 50001 Energy Management Systems Standard. That is the unique um, 
qualifying eligibility that you would you would need to um, submit an entry. Thank you. The, the next question is for you, Andrew, and the question is, uh, has the award affected the, client, the client's behavior, behavior towards the company? That's an interesting question because, as I mentioned, we sell into a common gold market and all the gold we, gold we produce is taken. But the perception of New Afton as a leader around energy management and energy conservation in the mining industry has really been fantastic. And the recognition we received as a result of this award uh, has really helped to reinforce the fact that New Gold is, is standing there waving the flag high. We're still the, the only mine in North America that implemented ISO 50001. And this award was really testament to the efforts we've done and has, has put New Gold with our social responsibility and our sustainable mining practices in the best light possible. So we've had real positive reinforcement as a result of, of this award. Thank you, Andrew. And uh, the next question is, uh, I think, for Nasi. And uh, the question is, how much time does it take to uh, until uh, uh, there is a decision about the awards? So uh, the um, awards are the deadline, as I mentioned, um, is January twenty fourth, and from that time, there is an initial review that's conducted by the secretariat to ensure that the uh, case studies are complete and do meet the criteria. As Andrew mentioned, he told the story of his initial case study being over a couple of pages. He submitted 16 pages versus this six pages. Um, so if you submit earlier, you'll have the benefit of having an initial review to make sure that the entry is complete. We want to make sure that the entries um, do are eligible and qualify before we pass them on to the judges. So around the February timeframe, we um, all the eligible case studies are sent to our panel of experts. Um, experts do not score case studies from their home countries to eliminate bias. So uh, these are randomly selected, but we do try to um, include eliminate the bias. Um, from any of judges if there's any conflicts of interest or whatnot. Um, so we go through the selection process throughout the February, March uh, timeframe. In April, um, companies are contacted um, with the results. If you are a top awards winner, honor, you'll find out in April. And if you are an Insight Award winner, you'll also find out in April. And then we um, publicly announce our winners through a press release uh, a little prior to the uh, Clean Energy Ministerial meeting that will occur at the end of May this next year. And uh, we'll work with all of our award winners to um, promote the news. Thank you very much, uh, Nancy. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, finally, we come to the end of the webinar. I would like to say thanks to the panelists for the informative and interesting presentations and to the audience for their active participation. The presentation will be beneficial for all stakeholders involved in energy efficiency and renewables. Thank you for your attention and wish you a good day or night from Copenhagen.